Hey all, uh, thanks so much for joining our webinar today and happy Friday. I hope you all are being safe and healthy. Um, we, uh, doing, we're doing well here at the, the World Docs team. We uh, have the last months, uh, as maybe you attended some prior webinars, but we've decided really to go into um, more of an educational mode and uh, with folks at home and um, looking to drive more value of the software they have. Um, we thought it was a good idea to, one, um, have World Docs educational series with um, things that you can do and how you can do uh, more with World Docs. Uh, in addition, um, you know, um, very importantly is our third party um, um, solution providers that we integrate with. Um, you know, as you all know, especially in the legal vertical, um, a product is, is, is a legal vertical product because they have very tight and smooth integrations with other legal products. And that's, that's really what makes the ecosystem um, well. And we've, we've been fortunate to have um, some great um, um, add-on products from Road Docs that can um, really help with your workflow. Um, pleased to have uh, a very old friend of mine, um, not old meaning he's old, but a very long-term friend, uh, Steve um, Irons um, here and uh, a newer friend, uh, Michael on the call. Um, uh, Steve and I go way back um, from a company or two ago, actually, that we've owned and um, uh, basically continue to look at improving workflow. Steve's had some, some of the greatest scanning and workflow solutions on the market. So um, with that, enough said. <clears throat> uh, thanks for being here, Steve, and I'll turn it over to Hella. Hold on, Ray. Before you do, I'm looking, I'm looking back over your left shoulder outside of your door onto that table behind you out there. Is that a little tub of Lysol wipes? And if so, can you hook me up with those? You You're know what I'm funny. saying? So, See it back there? You know, I've went back and forth with virtual <laughs> backgrounds. Uh, you can see over here. I mean, we're way off topic here, but you no, know. No, no, I got you. I got you. But I'm, yeah, I get it. A green screen. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do some of these videos. With <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not a producer, but I'm trying. Right, I'm trying to like make the best of this uh, um, non-real environment, kind of sit in your office. So, so I went with um, just that there. I got my door open. That is Lysol wipes. I, I, yes. You know, I'm, them on the shelf as like a you know i don't know like a collector item i think or something box right? them up and send them to me that's all i'm saying i like your background i just want the i need those wipes that's all send them to me okay. thanks Steve. i mean yeah. i know we got to get on topic here but i apologize i just noticed yeah. hey, you know but it's all good you know it's i was telling someone the other day it's good also to have an open dialogue and chat about things that are happening in the market maybe not in this call here right um yeah just to keep some sanity in so with that um turn it over to hella uh, thank you, Ray, and uh, hi, Steve. <laughs> um, hi, Hella. I'm, uh, hi there. I'm Hella Schwartz Grossman. I'm the marketing manager at World Docs. And before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items for everyone. Uh, the webinar will be recorded, and the link will be emailed to you afterwards. Uh, we have everyone muted right now, but if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the GoToWebinar questions pane, and then we'll address them at the end of the webinar. Um, as Ray mentioned, uh, today we are joined by Doc Solid, and uh, I'm excited to introduce our speakers today, Steve Irons, president of Doc Solid. Uh, Steve is an Arizona native who enjoys an occasional getaway to the Grand Canyon. Uh, Steve has led several technology companies prior to founding Doc Solid, and his team developed the innovative barcode scanning called Quick Tag Legal over 10 years ago. Those innovations have evolved into DocSolid's postmark paper to digital software, a comprehensive um, platform for scanning solutions designed for law firms and corporate legal departments. Airmail 2 is the newest addition to this platform, and that is the focus of the presentation today. Michael Herzog is the director of marketing at DocSolid. And he will kick off uh, today's webinar meeting with a brief um, poll. And uh, I am going to hand it over to Michael right now, and he will continue from here. Thank you, Hella. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Uh, 
Yes, to get things started, what we usually warm up with our webinar audience is with a poll. And this is a poll we've been doing with our Airmail 2 webinars throughout the year this year during this pandemic. So it's something that we think you'll all find of interest. And uh, Helly, you can go ahead and pull that up. Thank you. So uh, on screen, if I can bring your attention back to the quick poll, when do you think 50% or more of your employees will return to working at the office? And you can select among the options that you may never go back to 50% or more, or the first half of next year, the second half of next year, or have you already achieved that 50% threshold at this, at this point in time? And uh, we'll give everyone a moment here just to choose their answer. There are only right answers, no wrong answers. I always want to have Jeopardy music playing in the background while we do these polls, just to give everyone a chance to respond. Uh, Hella, you can probably see if responses have reached at least 75 or 80 percent of the audience, then we'll uh, go ahead and close the poll out. Yep. Okay, we'll close it right now. And then and uh, we'll, we'll share it. There we go. So 60% say they're looking at second half of next year. And let's face it, 2021 is upon us, right? So it's uh, second half of the year. Uh, no one believes we're getting back to the first half. And, but we do have some that uh, believe we, or some that actually are already at 50%. And I'll just mention for perspective, we don't have the additional uh, data to pull up from our prior polls today, but I just wanna share with you the perspective that while doing these polls, for example, if you can recall yourselves back in March when we had a, a lockdown happen, uh, everyone was just uh, scrambling at that point to uh, reorganize how they were working. Uh, these answers varied widely, but, all, but also included options that we're looking at later this year in 2020. And as we got into the summer, more and more people were answering that they were definitely more confident that they were going to be getting back to uh, 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 the still a new normal, of course, of course. But um, but the point of the uh, results that we've seen from doing this poll with our audiences in our webinars has been that uh, it's just absolutely an uncertainty that is uh, a continuously moving target, and you know with that it uh, it just seems to ebb and flow with the immediate uh, you know, uh, information that we are receiving. So with that uncertainty, what we're trying to bring to everyone's attention is uh, those things that you can be certain about, those things that you must be certain about to keep your practice uh, productive, to keep, your, to keep your employees working securely. Um, anyway, you can go ahead and uh, pull that off screen. And uh, Steve, we're ready when you are, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Hella. Thank you, Mike, Michael. Um, so we are starting to understand the life ahead of us at our law firm. The pandemic at some point will be over, even though it keeps dragging us into deep, deeper waters. In that new normal, perhaps even in your now normal, you need a digital mailroom at a law firm. For attorneys and staff to be productive in their home offices, they need access to daily inbound mail and paper documents that are arriving back at the main office. And when a workforce comes back to the main office, 50%, 60%, whatever it is, it's gonna come back. When they come back, a digital mailroom is gonna be necessary for that new work environment as well. Uh, law firms just aren't going to return to the practice of physically delivering that paper mail. So Doxala developed Airmail 2 specifically to meet this challenge as a new digital mailroom operation for a law firm. Airmail 2 is built on Doxala's proven paper to digital platform for law firms and for the new normal requirements for working in and outside of the office. Now, uh, we have a white paper on the Airmail 2 solution and the reasons it, it's required, uh, a digital mail room's required, so it, it, it's available for download, and we'll answer questions about it later on today. Our agenda, these, usually, these webinars usually take about 45 minutes. We'll give you a brief introduction to DocSolid, 
And then we'll talk about requirements for a digital mailroom. You know, everybody put one together, kind of cobbled together instantly when they sent people home. But when we stand back and think about it, what are those requirements? Then we'll show you the Airmail 2 solution and talk uh, about our white paper or any questions that you may have. Uh, the, I think Hella told you, you can just be keen in your questions as we go along today, and we'll pick them up toward the end. So a quick introduction to DocSolid. Our company does one thing for a living. We make paper to digital solutions for the law firm marketplace. You know that love-hate relationship you have with paper in your law firm? And I often say that what we're in the business of is more uh, therapy than, than technology. Uh, but what we do is help a law firm when it says, we want to be digital. We want our document management system, we want World Docs to run the legal practice. We don't want paper files. And we help law firms through that transformation. Our solutions are very innovative because they focus on the intersection of paper and people rather th than just the application of technology. And recently we've been retooling our solution for what we believe are new normal requirements in uh, law firms. And the two big ones that we identify are the digital mailroom, which we'll talk about today, but also the digital file room because law firms now are gonna shrink their real estate footprints. They're just not gonna have all the same people come back into work anymore, and they're gonna to wanna to reduce their real estate expense. It's the second biggest expense in a law firm. So in the first quarter of next year, we'll couple a digital file room solution with the digital mail room solution. Anyway, we're, we're trying to follow the market need. Our track record, we have patented ways to get scanning, printing, and shredding managed in a law firm. Four of the top 10 biggest firms in the US have paper to digital projects with us, as do many medium and smaller firms as well. And then just quickly, our solution platform is branded Postmark. And for scanning, we have two solutions. One is called Postmark Scan, and one's called Postmark Scan Back. Postmark Scan is highly structured scanning to world docs it actually embeds in the world docs user interface and scan back is for more convenient scanning it's for scan to email and simple walk-up scanning interestingly 30 percent approximately 30 percent of the paper that burdens a law firm is suitable for scanning i mean we need to scan things that come from the outside actually up to 70 percent of the paper that ends up in file rooms and on desks in a law firm is actually printed from documents that you already own electronically. And our postmark print helps solve that problem. Fundamentally, by just marking anything that's printed from any software application, if that printed document resides in the document management system, it simply identifies that those documents should be shredded instead of stored. And then we have a solution called Postmark QC, which manages the physical life cycle of paper in the background. Does, you don't have to do anything with it, but it manages it all the way through a digitization process and then into a shredder. At the end of the day, this is just structured quality control to make the law firm comfortable that they can shred paper uh, in the normal course of business. Lastly, DocSolid offers consulting, paper to digital consulting, we're the only technology company that does this. We come in and, and help law firms fit one or multiple of these technologies against their ambitions and their starting point. But come March of this year, uh, we said, wait a minute, our customers are gonna need a digital mailroom. And we developed Airmail 2, which we'll talk about today. So Airmail 2 is the latest addition to our Postmark family of solutions. And again, these all just plug into a platform. They're available uh, standalone or together. But let's talk about the digital mailroom. And the digital mailroom is gonna be important. It is important now for remote workers, but it's gonna be used in most law firms for on-site workers as well when people come back into the office. Because frankly, uh, sorting 
physical mail, putting it in wire baskets on wheels and and pushing it out to desks in the law firm, that was never a particularly uh, modern solution anyway. And in these times, it's a super spreader event. So we just want to get digital and stay digital in a mailroom. What we're talking about is simply the United States Postal Service mail that shows up and any FedEx or UPS shipments that show up with paper documents, even process server deliveries. They're coming to your downtown office and your folks are working in, at home. So it's got to be digital. Equally important to make sure we can accommodate is if the file room is back at the main office downtown, you're, you eventually have attorneys that, that are going to need something out of a matter file and they're requesting physical documents. And, you know, we all might uh, raise our hands guilty that we actually have people driving into town or out of town to deliver these physical documents. We got to do better than that. So uh, the, the delivery needs to be digital. We've got to scan these things, but you're going to see that DocSolid focuses on delivering to the document management system, not to the email system. So in other words, if these documents belong in WorldDocs, let's deliver them through WorldDocs. Now, the first question is, why don't we just go ahead and do uh, a digital mailroom using our existing scan utilities? And the answer to that is you can, but you're here today for a reason, aren't you? Um, existing scan utilities tend to be you walk up to a copier and you type something in and you scan a document one at a time. That's not a very productive means of getting this work done. Uh, and also, if you scan it to email, then attorneys are getting it in an email as an attachment. Your email uh, is not a workflow tool. It's not where those documents belong. So you're actually pushing work out to the attorneys at home. So we got to pay attention to productivity. Um, and next, you got to think about security. It was okay to do a quick scan to email early on during the pandemic. But when you scan to email, you're putting a PDF, unnamed PDFs in your email server, and, and they float and bloat that email server. Um, the security, uh, biggest security vulnerability for law firms is their email systems and attachments. So you don't wanna go building uh, permanent systems into the email uh, system if you can avoid it. And then lastly, this has to be a reliable operation. So if I'm working at home and I'm an attorney, I need to know that the mail gets handled by 1.30. That document I was waiting for, it's either here or it's not. But if it's 2.30, I know it didn't come today despite notifications I might get. So this has got to be a reliable uh, operation. It's mission critical now. This digital mailroom needs to be looked at as an essential new operation at law firms. So when you stand back and think of it that way, what are the requirements at a high level? Well, it has to run as an operation, meaning it needs to be productive. Uh, it's going to be manned by clerical staff usually, so it needs to be simple and it needs to be secure. This is client information that's flying out of the law firm toward attorneys, so it has to be secure. As we said, Doxada believes that legal mail should be delivered to World Docs. That's where it belongs anyway. Administrative mail, uh, invoices or something like that, if you want to scan that to email, go ahead, but we're gonna be able to do both the quality controls for the operation need to be built in. Simple, daily quality control that happens so that you know you're delivering uh, uh, images in daily mail to the uh, DMS and to the attorneys. You need to stage that paper after you scan it. Almost all law firms that are scanning with some makeshift operations, they're not getting rid of that paper. They, they do dual work, they'll bundle it up and go put it on people's desks or they'll stack it up. That paper needs to be staged and after a certain period of time, it needs to be shredded because it's already in the document management system. The operations should also be able to be monitored. If your firm has multiple offices, you've you got to think about that situation too if the mail is showing up at different locations. So staffing and workflows for smaller office need to be accommodated, as does the 
planning perhaps to centralize the re receiving of your mail at one office. And then this should be an easy system to deploy, right? We wanna use existing document management system integrations. We wanna use the scanning devices, usually a digital copier that are already sitting there on the floor. Easy deployment, right? Software should be web browser based, zero footprint. So those are some requirements to think about uh, to put a new digital mailroom operation in place. Here's the good news. Almost all law firms for a long time have been saying, we'd really like to get more digital. Well, post pandemic and even now, the last major flow of paper into your firm is that mailroom. And if you can make it digital, you're gonna push your firm a long way uh, toward its paper to digital transformation as a backroom operation before anybody even has to bother with inbound paper. So that's the good news. So just as a reminder, if the mail type is legal, legal mail destined for an attorney about a matter, we wanna put it into World Docs. If it's administrative, again, invoices is an example. Uh, we could use World Docs, but you might choose to do scan to email for that particular type of mail. For everything that the mailroom scans, we need to run a quality control process as part of the operation. We need to send notifications to let people know you've got mail. We need to be able to run a help desk and we need to be able to report on you know, daily, weekly, monthly activity. That's your digital delivery. But when it's all done, you've got those mail items in paper. They're gonna be staged, physically filed temporarily. And that allows an attorney, for example, to say, wait, this, document, great, I'm glad it's scanned, I'm glad it's in World Docs, but I need you to pull this because it's a signed document and we're gonna file this physically. So you need to have staging of that paper. Eventually, the paper that's not retained it should be shredded. Uh, that's efficient, that's cost effective, and it's secure. And then for the small population of paper that needs to be retained, that's called out in the same process. That's what your digital mailroom does. Now, fortunately at DocSolid, we already had a scanning platform with integrations and uh, customizations for law firms. We happen to use little barcode labels that look like stamps. So Dorothy, we were already in Kansas, right? So users in the mailroom have a little roll of stamps. These are just pre-printed barcoded labels. The stamps have numbers that are sequential. So the operator in the mailroom is just gonna pull off their next stamp, but because the barcodes are sequential, our software always knows the next number. And they're just gonna put those barcodes onto mail items and scan them. And because of our software, it'll automatically put them into daily mail folders in World Docs for each recipient, for each World Docs user. Here's how that works, okay? So this is the four steps in an AirMail 2 operation in a digital mailroom. We're gonna build batches for this work. And whether you have 20 pieces of mail a day or 100 pieces of mail or day in an office, you wanna run batches because it's the most efficient way to work. And also because if you have a big volume on a particular day, you could have two of your clerical staff working at the same time to get the mail out on time. So step one, open and prep the mail. Fundamentally open it and uh, smooth out the paper so that it can go through a, a scanning process. Our software is gonna eliminate the need to sort the mail. Today, mail gets sorted alphabetically by the recipient and then sorted perhaps on how they're gonna distribute it in the firm. That work can go away. They're just gonna open it and prep the mail. The next step is to take a prepped mail item and with our AirMail 2 software, which I'll show you next, identify who gets it and put a stamp on the first page. Remember, our stamps are barcodes. After that, you're able to scan stacks of the mail items in one single uh, uh, press of a button at your existing copiers. 
and our software will figure out how to deliver everything to daily mail folders and world docs it will also send people that received mail a notification to let them know that the mail is there and then lastly we're going to take that paper that just went through the process and we're going to use the paper to do a quality control step on the scanning jobs and then we're going to stage that paper for eventual shredding so if this process is running at our law firm let's say we've already done step one we've taken the mail we've opened it up and we've prepped it and now we're going to deliver that stack to somebody that's a mailroom two operator could be the same person they're going to go sit in front of their computer now and uh they're gonna this is the airmail two software screen uh, I'll say two things about it that are very important. One, you can see that it runs in a browser, so there's nothing to install. If you have multiple offices, of course, that's helpful. It's also a better way to run software these days. And the second thing is that even though this software is going to allow you to put mail into daily mail folders in World Docs, you don't have to give a login to your mailroom operators to World Docs. They don't get to touch the document management system. We front end it. Okay, so now I'm sitting in front of the Airmail 2 software. Imagine I have a stack of prepped mail, and here I pull the first mail item off the top of the stack. Looks like a three page document in the envelope. Most firms want to scan the envelope as well. So here we go. The only thing I have to do in the Airmail 2 software is say who gets this. So I don't need to be a skilled operator, I just look and see who is this addressed to. And as I start to type, it's going to access uh, what is effectively an active directory uh, in your uh, firm, and it'll fill out for me automatically who gets this mail. This, this particular paper mail item that's sitting on my desk next to my computer, I've said this goes to David Robbins. Simple. And our software on screen is always showing me, because I'm logged into Airmail 2, it knows my next stamp number. All I do is pull that stamp out. It's a barcode and I put it somewhere on the first page of, the, of that mail uh, item for David Robinson that's it I enter the name who gets this and I put a stamp on the document now because I'm working in batches I'm going to take that mail item and I'm going to put it in a little folding out basket and I'm going to go get my next one and I'm going to address and stamp it and I'm just going to go through my mail stack and build a stack over here in my doc folder, which is a folding out basket that is going to contain all your mail items that are now ready to be scanned. So very simple software user interface. There are some cool things happening in the background, though. Let me show you those. Remember, I said the only thing the operator has to do is say who gets this piece of mail. And we have type ahead, and we're, we make it very easy to enter that. But everybody in the firm who can have mail delivered digitally to them has presets. So if David Robinson is an attorney who never wants to bother with his mail because his legal assistant does that, when the mailroom operator says David Robinson, our software knows to deliver this instead to David Robinson's legal assistant. Mailroom operator doesn't have to know that. They just say who's addressed to this piece of mail. But the software is going to deliver it based upon preset uh, workflows, um, in this case for David Robinson. And uh, if this Dave, David Robinson was a firm administrator, then perhaps he, he's not even running World Docs. Maybe David Robinson's going to get his mail delivered by email instead. Uh, each individual in the firm also has customized notifications that'll tell them that mail has arrived. Okay, so that's presets. The operator in the mailroom can also use a description field in this case to say, who's this mail from? So that's kind of cool. If I'm David Robinson and I get three pieces of mail today, and this is a descriptor that says this one's from the US District Court of Central California, I know that's the one I was waiting for. I go grab that one first. So there's a description field. It can actually be passed all the way into World Docs when this document finds its eventual home. There's a place to put a page count. So if we receive the signed contract and it's 112 pages, 
um, I can say it's 112 pages. Now, our software always knows how many the copier sends us. If those two numbers don't match, we'll stop that job and say, hey, you need to rescan this. When I pick somebody to deliver this mail item to, our software is gonna show you who gets their notification and where their mail gets delivered. In this case, David Robinson gets the notification and it's delivered to WorldDocs. And David Robinson's email that he wants is a, well, an email that says, hey, a document has been delivered to your daily mail folder. It's from the US District Court of Central California. And that email body will have a thumbnail image of the first page of that scanned mail item to make it easy to uh, deal with it. Lastly, you don't just have attorneys or, or, or staff, you can have uh, workflows in your deliver to list. So for example, if there's an individual at our firm who receives all invoices, the, um, the operators in the mailroom don't have to know that. They can just say, this is an invoice. It goes to the AP invoice process and our software will deliver it to that individual or group. So uh, that's the uh, airmail to, um, um, we call that our deliver to screen. Now, there's a companion screen and you can just switch over to what we call our profile to. And it's a different way to profile either inbound mail or documents from the file room that somebody needs from home. Here's how that works. Uh, sometimes litigation firms have a highly skilled mailroom staff and they actually are capable of identifying the matter where a mail item belongs. If they know that, they can use this screen and actually key in either uh, the uh, client or if they know the matter, they can key that in directly. And once they do, we're gonna grab that particular matter structure in uh, WorldDocs and display it. So they can actually scan all the way into a fully profiled folder in uh, WorldDocs. And we can set this up so that you can deliver daily mail actually into matter folders. Again, that's appropriate if you're a litigation firm. But also, if requests are being made for individual documents or folders, this software screen can be used to uh, scan and deliver that document request to a home worker but perhaps even more importantly, you could use this software screen to start, start scanning your whole file room as you start to make it digital. So the key thing here to know is that AirMail 2 comes with a simple way to uh, address inbound mail uh, to daily mail folders in WorldDocs for the recipients, but it's also a full scanning solution for the firm that goes beyond that. Anyway, when you're done uh, uh, putting the barcode labels and addressing the documents, you walk them over to your Ricoh, your Xerox, your Canon. We don't really care what kind of digital copier you have. We support them all. In fact, we don't want you to have to type at them anymore. They all have a, an LED panel that you can program. We say, just put an AirMail 2 button. So you would take your whole stack of mail put it in the feeder and press that AirMail 2 button and then press scan. This is gonna work for any maker model of copier you have or for dedicated scanners. And at the end of the day, now these machines can be used, the ones that are in place without any logins or typing to get the daily mail out. And uh, you don't have to add any hardware or software to them. So this is part of us just making it easy to deploy this system. Now, once you scan, everything else is gonna be automatic because the barcodes on the Daily Mail are gonna help us figure that out. Our server, which is a virtual server, picks up a scan job uh, from any one of your uh, scan devices anywhere in any of your offices. And again, DocSolid has customers that are running around the world on multiple continents. Uh, to us, you're gonna press one button, scan a stack, and our software, grabs that stack and it goes through and it finds all those stamps, those barcodes. It uses them to separate out the individual mail items in this case. 
If you scan it upside down, we'll turn it right side up. We actually check in that paper document. We say, we know where that is now. It's progressing through the scan process. And we couple it with its image. Our Veritag audit system, it's running in the background. It's gonna make sure that everything that entered the process ends up in World Docs today. But then lastly, we read that stamp and we know whose daily mail folder in World Docs to write that mail item to. So all that's just gonna happen automatically at our server. And once we put it in World Docs, uh, you'll retrieve it like you would retrieve any other OCR searchable PDF. But you'll notice that when we store it, we remove the barcode from the stored image because attorneys don't wanna see that, right? So we're using that barcode to get a document through the process, to get it scanned, to get it where it belongs in World Docs. But before we store it, we remove that image. Well, what we've done is gone through steps one, two, and three. The mail was prepped, the mail was addressed and stamped, and then the mail was scanned. There's one more step, and that's to do quality control every day on this operation. Look, the end product is a delivered piece of mail to an attorney so that they can do their work. Well, if she gets a, a document that is missing pages or that needs to be rescanned, now we're slowing her down. We need to just give her a good uh, delivery every day. So did every mail item get scanned and get written to World Docs? Image quality good, did we get all the pages? And then let's take this paper and let's stage it. If somebody needs to have it pulled, we're gonna make it easy to find it, and then eventually we're gonna shred it, okay? So as I mentioned in the background, our Veritag system is always running. If at the very beginning I put a stamp on a document with our software, it's gonna go through a series of steps, but if it doesn't end up in World Docs within a given period of time, our software is gonna send out an alert. We didn't get this one. We know exactly which one it was too. It was the David Robinson. It was from the U.S. District Court of Central California. Didn't come through. So maybe somebody, you know, didn't scan it. But let's make sure everything that enters the process ends up where it belongs. And our software will just, in the background, track that for you. We'll send a notification if something went wrong. But now, that stack of paper is the stack of mail that got scanned today. And we're going to do that last quality control step. It's really easy and it's really quick, but it makes sure we can eventually shred this paper with confidence. So I'm going to sit now at my computer and I'm going to run the, Air, or the uh, AirMail 2 quality control software. And I'm going to take the first mail item off of the stack. I can either type the barcode number or I can just use a little wand. And this is the postmark QC for quality control software. And it's a workflow, you can do as much or as little quality control as you want. But this is pretty typical what a law firm would do. They'd say, look, I wanna check image quality. You know, I can check that in full page or thumbnail displays. I wanna check page count, did we get all the pages? I wanna check that this was written to World Docs. And then, you know, give me instructions. Okay, this document can be shredded. So if everything goes well, I'll check those. Maybe I'm spending 30 seconds. I press the accept button and I take that paper document and I put it in my staging box, okay? Now, if it says there's three pages, but I look at this piece of mail and they were dual sided, so there's really six pages, I could just take that document, turn around to a small scanner right there at my desk and scan it again on dual sided mode. Our software would see that barcode, it knows it scanned it before, and it must be a rescan. It would then version the new six page document, send it up front, and this would now reflect six pages, and we're off to the races. So simple quality control at the end of the process, regimented that we can report and audit on, that makes us confident that these documents can eventually be shredded. We're not gonna shred them yet though. We're gonna store them in boxes temporarily. They're actually in a sequence. Remember those physical barcodes are still on the paper. And that's gonna help us find one if an attorney calls in and says, hey, I, I need you to pull this document and file it permanently. So uh, the barcodes 
used to stage the paper so that we then can eventually shred the paper. So, quick review on the Airmail 2 software. Uh, it is, there's presets for everybody in the firm and it, that d determine how they want their mail delivered, right? To the DMS, that they want it to email, who gets their notifications, who handles their mail for them. There's also our profile two screen, which would actually let you start scanning all the rest of the paper in your firm. For both of these solutions, you do not have to have a World Docs login. These operators can't get to your World Docs system. We front end it. And then as you've seen, it's a very simple set of software to operate. We make supplies to make this go easy. One of the things that we make is a dock pocket, which is a clear plastic sleeve. And you can just take the envelopes from each piece of mail and slide them into there and put them in the stack as the last page with each piece of mail. And it'll auto rotate and turn it right side up. And, but the uh, dock pockets allow you to have a simple way to scan the envelopes uh, with that, without getting jams at your scanning devices. We make various types of barcode labels. You saw the stamps. We make that doc folder. And then of course, any place where you saw one of our barcode labels used, we also have a cover sheet. You can print a cover sheet that will do the same as you're using the software. You don't wanna use cover sheets too much because they're slower and uh, they're your printing paper instead of getting rid of it. But it's always there as an option, okay? So let's talk a little bit about price. For uh, you know, most uh, uh, World Docs customers fall in this last category. A turnkey system, in other words, software services, consulting, and year one support for Airmail 2 comes in at around $20,000. The, these numbers are gonna vary based on certain configurations that you might want, but you should just figure about a $20,000 fully uh, uh, implemented system, including annual support. Or you can get these systems hosted and that size of a system would be about $1,000 a month on subscription. That includes support, okay? And of course, we would go through a process with you to determine your exact uh, needs, but that people always want to know what does something cost? There's an idea. If you're a medium firm, you can see like uh, numbers, and for AMLA 200 firms, you can see numbers there as well, okay? That's not intended as a quote, but it give you a, a price range today. All right, so you've got a need for productivity, security, and reliability. If you handle productivity, then you're gonna handle, handle your hidden costs. You're gonna get rid of paper at your firm, you recapture real estate, you're not gonna overwork the staff. Uh, if you handle risk well, you're not gonna be putting um, mail in uh, unsecure uh, risk zones in the email system. And lastly, uh, reliability means you can do this on time every day. It's time with a digital mailroom to shift from the heroics that we used to put in place a digital mailroom at the beginning of the pandemic to process. What's a good process to run in a sustainable future? And then this is an essential new operation for a law firm. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we have a white paper, seven reasons to upgrade to a digital mailroom operation. I know some of you on the uh, webinar today have seen that, uh, but, but that white paper is available as a download from our website. If you have questions, you can type them into the panel today. We also have in that panel, the ability for you to download an Airmail 2 uh, data sheet or an article that recently appeared in Legal Management Magazine about uh, digital mailrooms. And if you have other, other colleagues at your firm who would like to see uh, this webinar, uh, we're giving a webinar uh, next Wednesday, uh, December 16th, and you can sign up for that at our website as well. I will stand back now and let Hella and Michael tell me if we have any questions. Actually, uh, this is Rebecca, um, and Hi, yes, Rebecca. we do have a few questions. <laughs> oh, now you're going to come at me from the side, Rebecca. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I'll try to keep keep away from the uh, 
from my usual random uh, left field questions. Um, so first of all, if somebody already has your software, um, how complicated is it to add this to what they already have? And does their cost change? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, to, it, it's less expensive if you've already got our platform because you're only, only gonna get this new app and you'd get some related services, but it's certainly less expensive if you're already running the DocSolid Postmark platform. And it's simply a matter of, uh, as you might think, installing a new application that would run on top of it. Most of our uh, customers, uh, existing customers would already have Postmark QC running anyway. So yeah, quicker, simpler, less expensive, if you're already a DocSolid customer to add Airmail to. All right, great. Um, so another person asked whether there is an option to keep the stamp on there when the attorneys receive the, the scanned document instead of removing it in your process. Um, let's just be clear. The stamp stays on the physical paper, right? We actually use that to do quality control and to file that physical paper. Uh, but we do typically remove from the scanned image that barcode stamp because generally attorneys don't want to see it. Could you leave it on the image? That answer is yes. I don't think we've ever had a law firm that says they want to, but you can. It's an option to have it stay on the image. So um, just in general, like that leads me to another question. So I think it makes sense not to have the stamp appear on there. But the logical next question for me is when that attorney wants to know, you know, or wants to let somebody know, oh, we need to keep this document, put it in a file instead of, you know, the box for shredding. Um, how does that attorney identify that document uh, to the mailroom people? Yeah, see, you're so smart. Uh, we, <laughs> we pass that barcode number into the document management system as a field. So it's always available to reference the physical uh, document and its relationship to the scanned image, okay? So we don't lose that number. We can pass it into the document management system. There's, okay. other, ways to, there's other ways that we can do that, but a great question. So yeah, it does come off the scanned image, but we can pass it to the DMS um, it actually becomes part of the file name. There's several ways to relate the scanned image back to the original piece of paper. Great. Um, so I guess like no matter what firm you are, you're, you know, everybody gets junk mail at some point. So what, what happens with junk mail and are the, you know, do the people in the mail room, you know, I guess it puts them in a position to have to identify what's junk or no. It does. And it, it, it always did anyway, because um, most law firms weren't delivering a lot of junk mail up to the practice areas. Anyhow, let me tell you what's happening now in our early customers. And of course, the fur is flying out there, right? Because uh, digital mailrooms are new. Uh, but mailroom staff generally can identify uh, what is junk mail, and they don't push it forward in this process. It just doesn't belong in that process. But what most law firms are doing with the junk mail is they do keep it, right, uh, for a period of time before they throw it away. And in some cases, they actually will deliver it uh, or put it in cubby holes for the recipients. And, you know, they can come check their junk mail before it gets thrown away. So uh, I, here's what I will say is happening with junk mail out there. The mailroom staff, um, it actually surprises me, but pretty uniformly has the qualifications to say, this is junk, I'm not scanning it. What that means is that anything in question, they are scanning, right? They're not going to make um, high value judgments. They're going to say, this is obviously junk. And if it's not obviously junk, they'll scan it and push it forward. Um, and then what they do with that physical mail afterwards is they obviously want to throw the junk mail away, but they tend to stage that as well, particularly now that we're looking at 
you know, new digital mailrooms. All right, that makes sense. Um, so we've got another question that has come in. Uh, somebody wants to know if, if you can forward daily mail to a pool of people that, that handle profiling. Yes, right. And, and we, a uh, couple of our bigger early firms do this. So they don't um, necessarily slice and dice that a particular attorney has their mail go to a specific legal assistant. Instead, what they say is that this group of legal assistants, perhaps there's one per practice, uh, they're the ones who receive the daily mail and they figure it out. They move it to the appropriate matter file and that and they, and they notify the attorney that that mail is there so you can do it either way okay um and i guess uh what's the typical size of law firm that that would use this well i'd say the first qualifier uh that a law firm is big enough to make this kind of investment is that they've got a production document management system, right? I mean, DocSolid is all about getting documents that belong in the document management system, in the document management system. So uh, the, the second qualifier would be that your uh, mailroom operator receives enough mail each day that the risk and the operational productivity and efficiency are a challenge. Um, if your firm is getting, you know, 10 pieces of mail a day, you're probably not a candidate for our airmail too. But, you know, we have firms that have offices, several offices that are getting 20 and 30 pieces of mail a day, and they they are. So I did give some pricing today that it kind of helps. Look, pricing is a great separator sometimes. Uh, but But, you know, a law firm has to have enough mail has to be big enough to have enough mail that a mailroom operation is warranted. So uh, one question that occurred to me while you were explaining this, um, you were showing the stamps and putting the stamps on the documents. And if your mailroom is large enough and if your firm gets enough mail that you have several people that are handling it, um, do they each get like a, a separate roll of those stamps and, and how, how does that work in the application? Like they, they can all, because what prompts me to yes. ask this is the, the sequential number that matches the stamp. Yes, it's really simple. Uh, and first off, uh, you know, we've got some huge law firms and they, they, they don't have, you know, three or four. They, they could have two or three um, people that are doing um running the mail, the AirMail 2 software. So your question's valid. Um, each logged in user has their own role of stamps. Our software just knows who the logged in user is. That's what we do for a living, right? <laughs> we have firms that have a thousand users. So whoever the logged in user is, we know what their number sequence is. We just keep track of it. So if I'm a, an operator in the mail room, I have my role of stamps. And I work and Joe's over there and he's working and he's got his roll of stamps. And our software just knows what the numbers are. Is that cool? Yeah, it's it's pretty easy. Yeah, that definitely, you know, um, that definitely makes sense to me. And I just, you know, like I, I'm imagining if they sit close enough to, to each other, what if somebody mistakenly grabs the stamps for another person? Well, they they physically are marked with the name of the person who owns them, but you've oh, got okay. to, that's, that's okay, you got to accommodate worst case. If I grab Joe's and start using them, number one, every time I put a stamp on a document, my screen is showing me what that stamp number is. So I ought to look at it. Right. But uh, so every, I'd have to every time I would just have to ignore the one thing that's really changing. It's showing me my stamp number. But even if I ignored it, uh, our software would would trap every one of those scans. It would it, it goes into a mode we call scan back and it sends them back to the person who scans them and says, wait a minute, this you, you're not using somebody's using your stamps. So, yep. uh, 
we, we lock it down. Look, the entire world, 87% of the gross national product in the United States of America has a barcode on it. The reason is to control that inventory. We're controlling the inventory of inbound paper the same way with barcodes. So it's actually vastly more uh, process integrity doing this than in uh, other methods of scanning. Well, I like it. Uh, I'd love to start using it today. <laughs> well, good. Tell Ray to send me a check, okay? <laughs> Looks like he signed off just before we got to that. <laughs> uh, wouldn't you know it? Yeah. Let's see. Did we get any more questions? Um, no, I think we've I think we've answered everybody's questions. Um, um, Steve or Michael, do, do you have anything else you would uh, like to add, something we didn't uh, have a chance to cover yet? I think we covered it. We we hope if you're interested, you'll just uh, pop us an email at hello at docsolid.com or go to the website and download the white paper. Uh, we're here for you if you'd like to talk more about your digital mailroom. And by the way, happy holidays to everybody. These are the holidays we have this year, right? So happy holidays. Yes, that, this that's is our absolutely year. true. <laughs> um, Steve and Michael, um, thank you again for providing a great overview of how to create a digital mailroom with Airmail 2. And uh, we are going to post a recording of this webinar. So uh, if you need to watch it again, you can do that. Uh, also, if you have friends who you think might get use out of it, uh, let them know. Uh, tell them that they can uh, check, check out the, uh, our website and see the recording there. And uh, thank you to everyone. And hopefully you'll join us and our partners again for another presentation of the uh, technology webinar series. We usually have them on Fridays. And as Steve said, happy holidays to everyone. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Hella. Thank you, Rebecca. Bye now. Bye.